Um, welcome, thank you very much for attending today. Um, for any of you who have attended previous sessions, you'll know that this is a time when we meet on Zoom, uh, usually with a guest speaker, uh, to find out a little bit about different creative professions and the way that you may apply your creativity in the workplace. Uh, we've been hearing from lots of different people and today this session is all about arts therapy. Um, let's start off with a few introductions. So my name is Lisa Law. I'm one of the careers staff here at the university linked to arts and humanities. And as you'll see, I'm joined by two others. Uh, so Claire, would you like to say a quick hello? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Claire. I'm Faculty Public Engagement Coordinator. And um, I run lots of our uh, arts events, um, including Arts Fest, which you may all know me from. And also we're joined today by Kaylee, who's our guest speaker. Kaylee, do you just want to say a quick hello and introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Kaylee, and I'm the arts psychotherapist today. Give you the introduction about what I'll be doing, what I do. Nice Brilliant. to meet you. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. OK, before I pass over to Kaylee, um, let me tell you a little bit about how things are going to run today. Uh, we've got Zoom booked for an hour. We'll just see how we go. Um, so the session will be an hour at most. If you've got any questions as we go through, please do ask those questions. And the way that you can do that is through hovering over the Zoom toolbar where you'll see the Q&A function. And there you can just type your question. You can ask your question anonymously if you want to. We have got the chat open and that's so that we can post any information or web links out to you. And we are recording today's session as well um, so that you can watch the recording back afterwards. Finally, just to remind you that this is a public platform, so please don't share anything that's sensitive or confidential. OK, great. So I think that's me done and I'd like to pass over to Kaylee. Thank you very much, Kaylee, for speaking with us today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so basically, I am an art psychotherapist, or it's transferable, it can also be called an art therapist. Um, and I'll just begin to talk today about what an art therapist is um, and what sessions may look like as well. If you have any questions, I will say if you ask them at the end of the presentation, and I hope you'll be able to answer them. So further ado, the next slide. So what is an art psychotherapist? So basically, I am one, um, and basically I have got a postgraduate master's degree um, in either art psychotherapy or art therapy. Um, there's quite a few universities in the UK that provide these as well. You can have a look on Google and have a bit of a check to see um, which university does them and inquire. Um, we have got to be registered with the HCPC, um, which is short for the Health and Care Professionals Council. And this is in order to practice legally. Um, we also have to work within the British Association of Art Therapists. We call it BAT. Um, and this is the code of conduct and principles of practice, just to make sure that we are basically practicing ethically, morally. Um, you also have to be clinically supervised um, and maintain continual practice development, which is like CPD. So go to events, um, do reading on um, articles or um, basically do things that make sure that you're up on trends or things that are happening that are on topic or important within your industry. So you're always in the know of what's happening, what's going on. That basically are vital to your clients and yourself and the arts practice that you're in, so art therapy, um, incredibly important. Um, and as an art psychotherapist, you can work with children, young people, adults, and the elderly. And you can work in any settings as well, most settings. Um, and since coronavirus, most places are, are actually opening up as well, different places that were before the coronavirus were opened up as well, because they need support. Um, so next slide will be about art psychotherapy in itself. So next slide. So what is psychotherapy? So it's a form of therapy that uses art materials and artwork to express and communicate verbally and not verbally 
So speaking and not speaking. Um, thoughts and feelings, well, words are sometimes difficult. Um, I basically reference something from the BAT website and from YouTube, which I will give you a list of like references towards the end of the um, slide, which you can get a copy from. Um, art making can provide an insight into the unconscious part of the brain. So this is part of the brain that we're not aware of what's going on, but it's always happening. It's always there. Um, and art making can provide an insight about what's happening there. Um, and this comes out when we're doing artwork. And it's an, a gentle way to express and recall memories from past experiences as well, which happens as well as we're doing the artwork. And it takes an art therapist and a client to explore the visual work together. Um, and you don't need any artist experiences or any abilities to do art therapy. Um, just come and be yourself, whole self. So thank you, Claire. So what does a session usually look like? So it's held in a confidential space. This can be virtually, face to face, and it can also be held outside. Um, it provides therapeutic boundaries and containment. By that, I mean, usually same place, same time, and you and the therapist will speak about different things that you expect so you get a contract or an agreement about what you expect from the session and this will continue throughout your session with the person so if it's 12 weeks six weeks a year you'll, you'll talk about that with your therapist and the same with the therapist with you um, you'll have a range of art materials and different tools that are available and accessible to you so usually for example with me I'll bring in, depending on the, the situation, the circumstances, the setting, the person, I'll have, say, oil pastels, pastels, paint if it's available, um, and maybe even toys, maybe even Play-Doh, um, magazines to cut up to do collage, and it all depends on the circumstances. But there's always something that'll be accessible to you. Um, different approaches as well, and this is all dependent on an individual. And by different approaches, I mean like, so client-led, it can be directive, non-directive, psychodynamic, um, it can be attachment theory. It all depends on that individual and what's been brought into that space. And you can have a look on this with Google and do your own research as well. Um, it's also a space where the client can have fun, play, and make a mess, which is incredibly important. Um, talking may and can occur as well. So it can be a, a room that's quiet, or it can be a place where vocally, verbally, or anything can happen there. So it's a space that's, again, confidential to you and that client, depending on what can happen. Thank you for listening, and I'll be glad to. Um, take any questions you have. Um, I'll try to answer them as well. If I don't know, I will come back to you. Um, I'll leave you with this quote. Um, Art can permeate the very deepest part of us where no words exist. Um, so yes, thank you for listening. And this is a reference um, page as well, um, which you can take with you. So yes, thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kelly. That was really interesting and so insightful, especially the case study. Um, so, yeah, we're opening the floor to questions and I'm sure me and Claire have got some as well. Uh, I think there's a question coming already. Is that right, Claire? Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to leave that up a little bit longer. So yeah, that's fine. Um, Absolutely. Um, OK, so, um, yes, we've got a question here. Um, Claire asks, um, what was your initial degree in? Uh, so beginning, before I did my, my art therapy, I had a degree in interior design, which was from Derby. And then I then got, went to, um, got into art therapy from University of Hertfordshire. So in interior design in the beginning. Didn't you say, Kaylee, that you, you worked in interior design a little bit and there were some things that you liked, some things that you didn't quite so like, and you were sort of thinking through, um, you know, how you could apply the things that you liked a bit more uh, to, to work? Yeah, so when I was in interior design, I realised that 
I liked the design part of things like um, uh, design boards and things like that and the creative side of it. Um, what I didn't like was um, the technical side of things because um, I'm dyslexic. I'm also um, dyspraxic as well. And some parts of the technical side of me, like mass, completely throws me off. So I, my brain just could not compute. But with images and things like that, and even talking to people about what they enjoy, really, really got me. Like I could really relate. So I knew interior design, yes, I loved it. And spaces as well, how, how we relate to space really got me. And I could really get with that. But I realized that interior design, something was missing when I found out about art therapy where you could get to relate with people understand people and be in a space as well I was like yeah this is this the full package here I actually I can really relate to this and understand it and yeah was the full package <laughs> it's really interesting to sort of see an example of somebody that's still using their creativity but not necessarily strictly in the subject that they studied it just mm -hmm. shows how applicable art is in all kinds of different contexts. Uh, we've got another question, Claire. Ooh. Sorry, I'm on mute. Yes, um, what route did you take into training? Um, I really want to follow this path, but the costs and information on what courses are needed are confusing. So I know it's changed a lot since I was um, training. So I think I started training in 2017. Um, and when I was training, I remember you had to have a certain amount of hours in, I think it was like a care setting or something that had experience in a care setting like school or hospitals or social work or something like that. You also had to ha be um, active in your art practice, regardless of what that was. Um, and just have a willingness to basically self-reflect and be self-aware. Um, but I know now it's very different um, because of coronavirus. I understand it's very different from what, what I'm speaking to with friends who are interested in it now. You gotta do a certain amount of hours. And so I think the best bet would be to check with universities and what they're looking for and what they're asking now. Because I think my advice would be very wrong right now. Yeah, these things do change pathways into different careers. Um, I've just put a link up to prospects, which yeah. you might have come across uh, the, the audience that are listening. Um, it contains lots of different job profiles, including one for art therapist. And it's it there. These job profiles are rewritten every two years, so they're always up to date and we can rely on them. So there's information there about pathways into art therapy and the links to I think you mentioned BAT is that right yes Kaylee the, the professional body that accredits yes. all of the master's courses yeah. and um, HPPC as well yeah and that one as well yes so that's a good starting place for your research but like Kaylee says do check it out with the individual course providers as to what yeah. they're looking for okay um we have another question from Claire. Um, do you enjoy an art practice yourself? I love art. As probably as you can tell, I'm a wall. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> on it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. I love experimental art as well. When sometimes I don't know what I want to do, I just get my sketchbook out and see what happens. And I surprise myself daily. Daily. But it does. It helps. It gets me annoyed sometimes when it doesn't go wrong. But I think that's part of the progress in the process. So, absolutely. Okay, um, one from Kavisha. How important is it to have a psychology background? Um, I didn't have one. Um, when I went into my um, art therapy training, I had interior design and a art and design BTEC in college. That's what I went into. But um, I think it would help, definitely, because you've got that um, theory fundamental part of it going in. But um, I wouldn't worry about it because you'll get a, you'll get so much training and theories there, and it's such an intense training; it's unbelievable. But um, I wouldn't worry too much about it, to be honest. Coming from my my background, I didn't have one. So, do you do you work alongside psychologists and psychiatrists, or I mean, do you, you know, I suppose do you do sessions with them or? 
you know, I can't, I'm kind of trying to imagine it in my mind because I think sometimes, um, you know, if you were sort of with a younger person who you were trying to play out sort of certain um, scenarios, mm-hmm. I wondered if if that you would use our, our therapy in that sense. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I work, um, I work with a charity. So I work with um, Birmingham Centre for Art Therapies and we work with, um, so many different people. We refer on to psychologists. We can refer on to um, psychiatrists with uh, different people. We also work with like social workers. We work with um, multidisciplinary like agencies. Um, so yeah, I do work with different people depending on yeah. what the client brings on. But we also get yeah. referred to as well. Yes. So yeah, it all depends on the circumstances, okay. yeah. situations. But yeah. Okay, um, we have a few more questions. Um, do you respond to clients with art in the sessions? Yes. So when I'm in sessions, there are times when I make art with them, yeah. collaborate art with them, or sit there and just play with art while they're doing art as well. So yes, there is the um, a theory called art response as well. They've got quite a lot of um, articles about that on the um, BAT website. So yeah, I do. Um, is art therapy a new thing or has it been around for a really long time? It has been. Um, funny enough, I had someone say that to me once, like it's such a new thing. And I was like, believe it or not, it wasn't called art therapy at the time. But if you remember when people were, and then this is going, this is really drawn out. But when man was first around in caves and we were communicating on drawings on caves, that was art therapy to me. like because. Before man could talk, we were communicating on drawing on caves. So actually, yeah, it's been there since 17,000 years ago. I think it was someone told me that on um, our, in our course, if you think about it like that. But it's been around, I think it was World War II or World War I is when it got coined as an actual profession that we can actually look at it um, and be taken seriously. Um, and we're still fighting for that at the moment. But um, yeah, I think it was World War One, I, I believe. So yeah. Okay. Um, got a couple of more questions coming um, from Shivam. Um, I'm more interested in psychology and healing through talking. Mm-hmm. Is the art, the love for art, required? Um, because I'm very poor in it. <laughs> I'm sure you're not, Shivam. <laughs> <laughs> so. Is that question like, do you need art to do that? Yeah, is it a requirement, I suppose? Mm. No, you can do both. I know um, I, I have a lot of art therapy colleagues who basically do a predominantly a lot of talking, actually, in their sessions, because um, that's what mm-hmm. the client requires in that session. Mm. So you do what you feel the client needs. It's, more, it's, it's not about us as much in that room. It's about the client. If that makes sense. And, and just to say there's a range of different professions Absolutely. in psychology art therapy is one so you could consider um counseling or um, psychotherapy um yes. and again if you wanting to look into it a bit more i do recommend the prospects website which will give you a list of all of the job profiles that are around the the theme of psychology Absolutely, there's there's loads. There's absolutely loads. There's even talk, talk, walk and walk and talk therapy is a massive one because of coronavirus as well. Walk and talk therapy. There's mm-hmm. loads, loads of different. Um, as you said, loads of different venues you should go into with um, psychotherapy and talking therapies and stuff. Absolutely loads. Um, and if if someone was, was recently diagnosed um, with say a personality disorder, mm-hmm. um, and they wanted to pursue looking looking at, at uh, going into art therapy uh, sessions, how can they access these services? As a, wanting to be an art therapist or wanting to be... A, no, as, as in um, uh, wanting to join the sessions or... or um, um, I would look into... The that, that has the website where you can look into a therapist. They usually um, say what their clientele they usually look into as well. Um, well, I can actually get back to you on that because I have a few friends that um, have been have diagnosed that same diagnosis and they're finding um, the same. I think they've got a few different things going on there. 
I can get back to you with that actually. Okay, well, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we yeah. can share that with you. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Uh, this one's from Emma. I've been teaching and running workshops in schools for over fifteen years. Mm-hmm. We have daily issues with children who present with different different levels of need and help um, that they can't receive at home or with council therapists. In your opinion, do you think um, it is a help or a hindrance? Um, for me to talk to these students with no form of professional training. Um, she goes on to say, um, I often feel like I shouldn't offer advice without this basis to rely on, um, but the students keep, keep coming back as though they need the help. So as in like, do you think go and talk to them about? Say again. Um, okay, so Emma's been teaching and running workshops in schools. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's daily issues with the children um, and they present with different levels of needs and help, yeah. um, which they cannot receive at home yeah. or with cancer therapists. Um, do you think it's a help or a hindrance for her to sort of help these students with no formal professional training? Um, I don't think it'd be a hindrance. Um, it, I suppose it's figuring out how much you can take as well because it's it's about self-care just making sure that you don't take too much on because that, that's a lot <laughs> that is a lot of yeah. things to do if you can bring someone else in to support I would definitely recommend it um but yeah um just look look after yourself with that one as well um but there's a lot of people especially the bat um, website a lot of people there for support it sounds like maybe support might be needed there Mm. But definitely look after yourself. Okay. Um, Liam asks, does art always mean visual interpretation or can you also use things like writing, poetry or other artistic mediums? You can use all the above, which I've done before as well, all the above. Sometimes I've gone into sessions and I've been asked to do things that I have got no idea what I'm doing, like textiles. I'm, I'm not very good at textiles at all. And I've just had to con go, go with it. And yeah, you just kind of go with it. But yeah, all the above. Okay. Haley, with that, that there are different professions, aren't there? So you're an art therapist, but there's a music therapist, there's yep. dance, a dance therapist, and they all have separate courses. Absolutely. For that. Um, but from what you said, I assume that once you're qualified in your particular sort of discipline, mm. then you can go outside the box a little bit as long as you feel comfortable with that and it seems right for the client. Is that yeah. how it works? So, yeah, you've got music, dance, drama, um, dance and movement um, therapy. Um, so, for example, and you've got play therapists as well. So, for example, I can go into a session and I'm confident enough to basically play with a sand tray or play with toys, but I can't call myself a play therapist, for example. I know I'm not a therapist. That's what, I've, what I'm qualified to do. Um, but we as therapists can kind of play with different different modalities um, as long as we're confident enough and know what we're doing. But we wouldn't then go and basically go around saying, oh, I'm an art therapist, I'm a music therapist, whatever. But for example, I have like the, um, I'll play a song and say, let's do a, an art response to this music, for example, just to see what comes out of that. But yeah, you can, you can play with different modalities if, if you know what you're doing in there and you feel comfortable competent and confident enough to do so but always check that as well always make sure that you know and have that that's where the importance of a supervisor always check with your supervisor what you're doing and if you're ethically okay with it and what the reason is for that reflect all the time on what's going on in that room with you and your client and what the reason for that is okay um where are our ther- therapy space so do you have like a governing body i suppose um, yes, yeah, so we're registered with the HCPC. Right. Yes, there is a website for them as well. Okay, I'll pop that up in a minute. Yeah. HPCP. HCPC, yeah. HCPC. <laughs> yes. right. Okay. And um, like Kaylee, um, like where, where, where are you based? Like, what kind of settings is it? Sort of community centres or building shared with other therapists and support workers or I mean, schools I mean, or 
Me specifically, or do you mean um, well, both really? I mean, it's interesting to know where you're based, but as a way of understanding how others are, where others are based. So, me specifically, I work with schools, secondary schools mostly, and a community centre, um, which is for adults, children, young people. Um, excuse me, and for um, art therapists. We can be based in schools, hospices, um, prisons. Um, I think it's easy to say what we're not, actually. We're literally everywhere. I don't think I know a setting that we are actually not have not been in yet, to be honest. Like, we have been in absolutely everywhere. And we're still making places as well. I've even known of, um, an art therapist who went into a bookies before as well. So it's anywhere and everywhere oh that's really interesting yeah so I've had many random places but I think it's great because we're just permeating everywhere so do you always visit others or do you sometimes do they sometimes come to you in a in a different space so I mostly go to schools like go to them Right. And sometimes I do it virtually as well. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I do it virtually. Yeah. How do you find that works um, virtually com compared to, to sort of, you know, sort of being in the same room and being quite hands on? Do you find that that's, um, do you find that more difficult? Honestly, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I prefer to be in the room with someone just because you can get a feel for, um, body language, the sense of the room, the art, how they've done it, what's going on. Yeah, so many things you can you can sense. Um, on a computer screen, it's so limited. You don't know what's going on around them, who's in the room, what's happening, the atmosphere. Still do it. I still do mm -hmm. it. Um, but it's I find I personally find it more limiting. Other people I've spoken to, like my colleagues, have found it still being absolutely fine. Um, but me personally, I find it a different experience. And I found it incredibly hard when I first started with the being coronavirus, like the first beginning of the pandemic. I struggled, <laughs> really struggled. Because it's getting the language as well, like the different kind of ways you can talk to people, like like tilt the screen, how do you do it? Because that's mostly takes part of the session again. Yes, yeah. But it's difficult. Do you, do you envisage um online sessions sort of being an ongoing thing now? Yeah, and I think it's becoming a bit more easier because you know you kind of start understanding what's to come or what's not and how to make people feel a bit more comfortable and what not comfortable or you start to understand things a bit like sessions normal sessions yeah. like face to face you start understanding what's needed what's not how to adapt it you start to become a bit more comfortable on online again depending on what what's needed okay um, <laughs> <laughs> right we've got quite a few questions um if you're ready for them um can any therapist use art therapy so, i.e. materials um, to, in order to, to um, do a creative task? Or does it need to be a qualified art therapist? Um, that's a good question, actually. Art therapists definitely need um, to do that. But I think, I mean, I know like psychologists that have used mm -hmm. art. Like, um, with an art therapist, though, they are trained to see, spot things. That's why we are art therapists. We're trained to spot things that are happening, like safeguarding, for example. We are trained to spot things in what's happening in that space with the art materials. Okay. Um, one from uh, Dana. What uh, would art therapy placements help get into? Um, sorry. Would art therapy placements help get into this field? Um, at, and is that an available thing? So placements, basically. You do that on your on your training. You have to. I think every every training I know, you have to have. I had three um, art therapy placements. And just before the session, we were saying that. Well, you were saying, Kaylee, it's quite competitive to get into in the first place because there are. I think I looked it up when I last looked it up. There were there were twelve providers of these masters courses, and a lot of people that are interested. So it's really important to get some work experience. It might not be a formal arts therapist placement, mm -hmm. um, but, well, you, you're probably better positioned than me to say, Kaylee. but anything with vulnerable people, is that right? Yeah. You know, any, anything where you can practice your 
um, client care skills, listening, um, and being able to communicate with people. Yeah. Um, is, is, is that kind of right? Yeah, you can know head. It's basically to work like to um, demonstrate your intrapersonal and interpersonal skills. So working out how you can basically self-reflect, become more self-aware and how you communicate, not just verbally, but also like non-verbally, how you basically, um, it's kind of like having interview questions, how you demonstrate, how you um, suss out different situations and dynamics in a space, because it can get really, I mean, it will get really intense in different places. And it's how you like basically handle that situation, how you handle different situations. And I'm not just talking about with clients, but with organizations as well because it can get really complicated if like rooms get booked and then like cancelled if, if the client doesn't turn up if it does what happens and just different dynamics room changes the artwork isn't there if it gets destroyed like what happens so all these things you gotta or if you have a disclosure who do you go to what happens then what if it's serious like all these things you gotta keep in mind and it has a really big toll on yourself as well so it's that self self-care as well so Really serious things you got to consider, but also you can do it. It is possible. So just, yeah. just, yeah. I've perhaps put in the chat when I found the right link. Um, we do have a uh, a team called the Workplace at the university, which arranges uh, all kinds of different jobs and um, volunteering opportunities for students. And with with the volunteering opportunities, there is a range of charities, local and national loads of opportunities working with vulnerable people of all types uh, young people children people with disabilities elderly and so on so that would be a brilliant place to look to begin with to get the right kind of work mm. experience yeah i think i did um what did i do first year i worked in a school second year i worked in a charity and then third year i worked with the nhs with um, adults with disabilities so very varied and I suppose work work experience would come as part of the, if you were going to do your master's course, you would do work experience with that anyway. So we've got a question about that in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I did a master's in another type of therapy, could you still go into art therapy and vice versa with other therapies? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I know a few people on my course that had like different masters as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, are there any famous artists or famous pieces uh, that art therapists can point to as examples of what to look for in interpreting? Oh, um, oh, I think that might depend on the might depend on the session, perhaps. Yeah, I think. Well, every person looks at art differently, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I could look at an art piece and you see something completely different. So I think it's all on the person who's viewing it. Yeah. And another thing is with an art therapist, we don't go in to interpret anything, if that makes sense. Like we allow the clients telling the story, it's the client's story. So we don't go in there as the experts or not. It's the person telling the story. We're just there to listen and then kind of pick out things that we're seeing. And then we're even told yes or no, about what's going on but it's it's that it's the client story it's the client's experiences there that's going on we're the ones that just i'm picking it with them gently mm. and helping them unfold what's going on just just a highlight <laughs> okay uh so during placements do they throw you in at the deep end or do you observe and work, work your way um through them that's a really good question i think it depends on the placement I've had, I'm not to scare anybody, I've had horror stories and I've had amazing stories. I've had a whole spectrum and I've gone through each one. I've had a lovely experience and I've had horrific experiences. However, you do get support most times. But yeah, you do get support. So yeah, um, sometimes um, a unis usually, our unis gave us like role plays and the Fortunately, you will have to potentially will have to do role plays um, where we had like in twos and we had to basically do like you as the client, you as the, the therapist and then switch to see what it was like before you actually go on placement. That was terrifying, but you get through it and you kind of get a perspective of what's going on. 
Um, but yeah, a lot of, lot of nerve, jer nerve jerking stuff at unis before they send you on placement. So heads up. <laughs> I guess it'd be brilliant preparation though, because role Absolutely. play sometimes can be more scary than the real thing. You know, other people watching and your classmates and your lecturers. Absolutely. So it's perhaps something you just have to get through so that you know you can do it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The things we did, like we had to observe two people in, in, in the middle of a classroom doing artwork before and we had to keep taking it in turns. Absolutely. I mean, I, I do have anxiety as well. So sitting there watching people watch me do artwork was absolutely horrific. However, it made me realise what it's like to stare at a client. Not comfortable. Don't, you know, depending on the client. Some clients like it, some people don't. So it's always having that awareness of what potentially could happen. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I suppose that's not something that you would ordinarily think about, but it's all of those things, isn't it, that you have to be like hyper aware of. Yeah. Um, uh, is there um is there like a really intense um weekend or week course that, that people could go on that would give them a broad uh sort of understanding of arts therapy? Do you know of any or is there anywhere that that we could point people to to find out? When I was looking into it, BAT did an introductory course. And also, I think the uni my university did it. The University of Hertfordshire used to do them, um, where it gives like a, like a few days worth of it um, to see what it's like to do um, art therapy. So BAT and the University of Hertfordshire. Okay. I don't think they still do. A they did it with under the... Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> a lot of local colleges as well will do an introduction to counselling, like a short course. It wouldn't be specifically art therapy, but um, it would be relevant. So perhaps have a look at those too. Um, and if, if someone had sort of um, past um, sort of mental health issues, um, would they have problems getting a licence in art therapy? No. They are... Um that especially now are really pushing for um oh what do they call it um experience in different kind of mental health like I say it's relate mm -hmm. which is imperative when you have someone who's like really struggling with their mental health you can connect mm -hmm. I mean I have anxiety severe anxiety so when I hear it I'm like I get you I understand yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's perhaps useful to have that personal perspective. Absolutely. And it's like to see, in, I mean, I've, I've seen it countless times, to see the, the, the defence and the worry just drain from their face. It's like, oh, finally I found someone who gets it. Mm -hmm. Just like, right, you're in a safe place now. It's okay. That's amazing. Um, well, that's all the questions. Oh, no, hang on. I just have one to come. Is it possible to get a link to that? Yes, I'll pop. Um, I'll find it and I'll pop it in the chat. Um, if anyone's got any more questions, do pop them in for Kaylee. Um, Lisa, do you have anything you want to? Um, yeah, just on that last one, do go back to the link that I sent to Prospects because it's got everything on that one web page okay. to, to BAT and the the other body. Uh, was it HC? HCP. <laughs> That so many one. acronyms. So many acronyms. Um, yes, okay. it's all on that one web page. Yeah, have a look at it. Okay, that's great. Have a look at that one. Um, yeah, I'm just curious, Kaylee. Um, it sounds like it's a really interesting profession at your end, um, but quite hard. Quite hard to get in, get through the training. Mm -hmm. um, what What do you enjoy about it? Hmm. So this question. There's so many different aspects I enjoy. Um, gosh. I love learning, honestly, um, in this profession. I absolutely love learning from, sounds bad, but from, from my clients, actually. Like, the more I listen in sessions, the more empathy and understanding I, I get from, um, from, from different people and individuals. Um, and it teaches me a lot about myself as well. It's almost like a, a, a mirror. Um, and it kind of unpacks and makes me realise that it's not just 
me and like us in this world there's so many things happening and to be aware of um but also the fact that I like to learn about art in general because there's so many different things that I've, I've learned with my clients as well that, that I'm like how in the world did you just do that and then they teach me about different things about like art and art practice and stuff and then we do it together and then I go home and I try it again I'm like oh my goodness and I teach it to someone else as well and I keep them in mind so yeah I think it's just it's like you said it's incredibly inspiring it's incredibly challenging but it's incredibly inspiring as well like so yeah that's what I think that's my best bit. I think the best bit to me yeah is my clients honestly yeah I can imagine it must be really amazing meeting so many different people and yeah the level that you would get to in understanding their lives and their issues it must be incredibly interesting it is it humbles you completely it really does but yeah you really do empathize in ways that you didn't even think imaginable and seeing their strengths as well seeing someone's like go from strength to strength My yes mind. yes like with the image that you showed uh, yeah. that um natalie had made yeah. and that showed the progress that she'd she'd made with you so that must be really gratifying yeah mind-blowing okay right i think we're coming to the end of the session and oh yes um so if the, the audience if you wouldn't mind just answering a few questions just so that we can see uh, what you thought of the session and it just helps us really to plan for future events uh, so if you can fill that in that would be brilliant um Kaylee, thank you so much for sharing your time today and giving us such a great insight into the work that you do. Uh, it's absolutely fascinating. We really appreciate you coming along and speaking to us. Um, Kaylee has said that the slides can be made available afterwards, so we can message you with those. Um, and the recording as well will be available on the university YouTube, but minus the bit about the client, because that's the sensitive part of the, the session. Um, okay, I think they're the main things. Um, just as a way of an advert for next week, we have Neil Hughes coming in to speak to us about a very different sort of creative profession. He's a event uh, event director, um, but uh, the the sort of events that he puts together are highly theatrical and creative, and he's um, put together events for some really high profile people, celebrities and royalty. And as part of that, he commissions all sorts of people. So costume designers, all kinds of performing arts, um, people from performing arts backgrounds, dancers, musicians, and so on, um, set designers, um, everything that you can think of to put together a really sort of slick, um, uh, polished um, event. So um, please do come along if you're interested in um, any of the sort of professions that you might commission for. And also if you're interested in events uh, and event management. So pop, just pop the link to that yep. in, the, um, in the chat, just to pick that up. Um, Brilliant. You, can, you can find all of our talks retrospectively on YouTube and on our Creative Futures web page. Um, so it's all there and um, you know, just have a browse because there's so much, so much good stuff. There's so many options. It's, um, and I think, Kaylee, this is just a, a great one, a, a real holistic um, branch, which um, I think is really fascinating. So thank you so much. Thank you all for having me. Thank you for listening. Yeah, come back anytime. <laughs> yes, and some male ones as well, you were saying earlier on. That, yes. Um, yes. Quite yeah. lacking in lacking male male art therapists. Mm -hmm. Very very female orientated. Mm -hmm. so yes, definitely need more male art therapists. So if any of you male out there want to become um, art therapist, please do. For sure, but yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful industry to come into. It really is challenging, as I said, but it's amazing. Yeah, rooting for it. I'm not biased at all. I promise. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. All of the yeah. students are saying thank you, Kaylee. Thank so, you, guys. And yeah. Thanks, everybody, then. Thank Great. So Have a good afternoon. Bye, everyone.